Good morning. This is Teresa with Teresa's Treasures Ministry, and it is a beautiful morning. So for the last, uh, I don't know, 24, 46 hours, we've been in a blizzard, uh, and it has been the best time. Snow has just been pouring down just constantly, and uh, we're traveling, so it, just, <laughs> it has been so, so cool. I love blizzards. I love storms. Because you never know what's going to be on the other side of it. You know the sunshine's going to come, but you just don't know when, but it does come. Uh, I hope you have your Bible, your Bible app, and uh, let's pray and see what the Lord wants to give us the, this morning for this beautiful day. Uh, God doesn't always give us what we want, but He gives us what we need. And he doesn't always show up when we want him to show up, but he's always there. Uh, and I say show up, our answer. Sometimes we want our answer immediately, like microwave. And sometimes it's been, in God's case, in our case, sometimes it's been cooking for years. And he's been doing things for years behind the scenes. And let me just tell you this. If you have people that are coming against you and it's and it's real hard that they're coming against you and you can just feel the hate and the fear and the doubt and all this, that's okay. Because why? Because all that stuff has to come out. All that yucky, goopy, yucky stuff has to come out. Because just think about that. Like if you if you have a wound that when it starts having that pus, you know, then it has the fever. And you've got to know that that infection is in there because if you don't know the infection's in there and it's going inside and not showing any real signs of hurting you, uh, it could kill you. I had a cousin that that happened to. Uh, she was 24 years old and she went to the emergency room and they told her there was nothing wrong with her and come to find out that there was something wrong with her, but they couldn't see it on the outside. It was on the inside. And uh, she had a clot, and it killed her. So you can't always see when somebody has something against you. But when hard situations come up, then all these feelings and all this bullying up of all this uh, hatred and jealousy there are so many people jealous that you have no idea that they're jealous until they start raging because jealousy is rage. That's what happens. And it rages out. And when people rage out against you, there's usually fear behind it. There's usually uh, some kind of uh, dissatisfaction of something they thought might happen, but it didn't happen. Or they are just full of hatred and forgiveness. So let's pray, and we'll get on with the lesson. And we're going to be looking in Malachi 3.16. So let's pray. Lord God, we love you, and we thank you, and we glorify you. There's nothing that you can't do. Holy, mighty God, lift up my voice to you, Lord God. We love you, we thank you, and glorify you. God, give us peace in the midst of the storm, Lord. I love a good storm, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And why would I say I love a good storm? Just look at the storm with, uh, when the disciples were on the boat with Jesus. Or I should say Jesus. they were on the, the boat with Jesus, and Jesus woke up, or they woke him up, and he said, peace be still. And at that point, they didn't even know who he was, of who was with them. I mean, people had their take on the storm and all this kind of stuff, but to me, what I think was happening there is I think that, so the whole creation worships Jesus. The whole creation worships God. And Jesus and God are the same, okay? God, Jesus is just God manifest in the flesh. And that's in Matthew. So when all that is kind of, when Jesus was asleep on that boat, I believe that the waves and the sea the, the, uh, was so excited that's why I believe that the waves were worshiping their creator. How can your creator be around you and you not know it? Uh, when we were at the rally, uh, one six on that, on the rally, it was so cold. At one point, the clouds came over. It was so cold, but it, I mean, it was so beautiful because at one instance, 
the cloud open the sky opened up and the sun shined through but it wasn't like the sun shined through and there was not heat automatically the sun shone shined through and immediately there was warmth that was sent out i mean it i had never been in an experience like that so much that everybody on the ground that was standing out in the cold looked up and thanked God for that heat. Thank God for that miracle because it was just getting, the temperature was dropping. And even though there were so many people, you could feel the, the cold. But then all of a sudden, uh, it was just so beautiful. It opened up and warmed us up. And then it went back behind the clouds. But it was so beautiful. And so the Lord told me that morning before we went to that uh, rally, that he was going to show many miracles that day. And I believe he did. There were so many people praying. So many people. And so I'm going to talk to you this morning about three six, uh, Malachi 3.16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. And that thought upon his name. He loves it when we think upon his name. He loves it when we meditate upon his name. It is so beautiful to him. Uh, and they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. And is it so cool right now uh, that... We can know good and evil. We can see it. We can see it all around us. What is good and what is evil. And in the last days, because we're here, so it's not saying, come on, we need to get in the, we are here in the last days. So get that out of your mind that the last days are coming. No, they're here. Uh, and let's just think about the Lord and talk about the Lord. And when, and when, when you're doing political stuff, it's not about the man. It's about the things, the laws, the things that that man stands for. Um, so there's not any kind of cult or worship of a man. It's about, I want my children and grandchildren and children's children to however long this thing goes on to have freedom. I am, love freedom. I was raised in freedom. And... You know, I have people tell me, well, we want to see a change. Well, you can see changes without killing freedom. Uh, I've already, you know, we've already heard about how uh, that things are going to change. I have a question. What was the difference between, what was the same, let's see. This is a question I asked my husband this morning. What did Hitler and Haman in the Bible have in common? Think about that. What did they have in common? They had one common go. And, the, and then look at the end results with those two. God delivered. God is not going to let that spirit, because that's a spirit. The same spirit that Hitler had and the same spirit that Haman had, that's a spirit. That's a Jezebel spirit. And it's a very dangerous thing when... Uh, that Jezebel spirit goes after the church. That spirit, I'm not afraid of that spirit because I've got a goal. My goal's heaven. So I win. Win, win. But what, when I don't win is when I don't stand up. When I, when I say, oh, I'll just let everything just go like it's supposed to go as far as do to do, do to do. No. No, you got to stand up. You can't just sit down and say, you know, well, I'm just going to pray and that's all I'm going to do. And I'm just going to live my life like everything's going to be okay. Well, it's not going to be okay if you don't do something about it. And I'm talking about give a Bible study. I'm talking about take somebody with you to heaven. I'm talking about do something. But don't think that just praying is enough. You have to get up and do something. You have to talk about Jesus. He said, Malachi 3, 16, Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. 
You're supposed to talk to each other. You're supposed to encourage each other. You're supposed to encourage each other not to get into fear. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to fear is God. Because he says, then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. I'm going to tell you a story that happened to me with my grandmother and my uncle. And this was so, uh, <laughs> it happened at a time in my life that uh, we came back from uh, Texas. Um, my husband had been in a really big battle over uh, alcohol being put in our community. And he fought and fought and fought in this battle. And it was so beautiful. Um, and he won. He didn't win. God put him in that middle of that battle to stand in the gap. Yes, we prayed and we sought God, but God won the battle. And uh, he was his life was threatened. Uh, there were so many things because there was millions of dollars involved with the man that was going to sell the his property and all these things. There was a car caught on fire uh, that w that had uh, that the Baptist church had put out on the highway. Uh, this was Lowry Crossing. This was. Uh, we were trying to save our neighborhood our these because a lot of retired people live there and we did but the battle was raging and it raged for days okay but god but god delivered and we didn't have alcohol there while we lived there now when we left the enemy came in and built a liquor store but while we were there we held our ground and we fought and we fought and we fought. And this is so beautiful because we had never been in a battle like that before. Okay. So God did it and it was beautiful. But if we would have just sat back and said, oh, well, you know, they're putting in a liquor store there and whatever. No, no. We stood up. We won. And to God be the glory. Okay. I'm going to tell you about that was that was spiritual and we had to physically stand up. Then there is another time that my uncle in California got leukemia and he was not saved. Uh, he didn't, he was not baptized and he did not have the Holy Ghost. He had bitterness in his heart uh, because of the church that he thought uh, some stuff happened to him with his mom and dad. They got a divorce when he was little and he blamed the church. Well, and when you're blaming the church, you're blaming God. Okay, so so I've not ever seen anybody that's fought against God and won. Okay, God's going to win. So there you go. Uh, if you don't, if you don't repent, then that's not going to work well with you. But if you do repent, that will open up a whole avenue of blessings. Myself, I like blessings. I don't like curses. So... Here we go. So my uncle got leukemia and he was dying. So here I was broke. We just, we just moved from Oklahoma, uh, from Texas to Oklahoma. We were broke. Our house was up for sale in Texas, but it hadn't sold yet. And so I told my husband, I said, I got to go to California. And he said, yeah, I agree. You do got to go to California. I said, yeah, because my grandmother had a promise from God. And that promise was that all of her children would be saved because of her faithfulness. Okay. My grandmother was very faithful to the house of God. And, you know, so people don't understand. They think that sometimes they think that, oh, you worship the pastor. No, you don't. There, God has, God has a, a, uh, somebody, some people call it a pecking order. Some people call it, uh, there is, God has a, obedience line, I guess you could say, to be obedient to. So God first, and if you're married, your husband, and then your children, uh, and not you obey your children, but there's just a, there is a order that you have to go in. And so I tell my husband, I said, you know, I, I really feel like I need to fly to California. And he said, well, all you have is, all you can have is $50 for cash for like to be there, like that's all. You've got your plane ticket, which was three hundred dollars in the one miracle, and if, uh, both way, you know, one way or a uh, round trip, and then you got fifty dollars to spend. And I said, God will make a way. So I got on the plane. I went out to California. 
I got to talk to my uncle about salvation, got to talk to him about repenting, got him hooked up with a pastor in California because when I got back from California, he wanted to talk to a pastor. So my grandmother, before she died, she went to a a little place called the Lighthouse Church. And uh, the man that was going to go talk to my uncle that was dying was from the Lighthouse Church in California. So it was very ironic that God worked all that out. It was just a huge, huge comfort to my uncle. So my uncle talked to the, the preacher. My uncle was baptized in Jesus' name. My uncle got filled with the Holy Ghost. And that was on a Tuesday night. As soon as they dressed him back, they, they baptized him in the bathtub because he had lost so much weight and he could not... He had went out once and broke his leg. That's how that's how ate up with cancer he was. He was so fragile. So as soon as they got him out of the bathtub, they dressed him, and he went into a coma. That was on Tuesday. On Thursday, he died. What I'm saying to you is sometimes you just don't pray. You've got to put feet, hands to the, to the plow to work. Uh, we are not saved by works, but faith without works is dead. So I can say all day long that I pray, I pray, I pray. Well, what are you putting your, your faith to your works? What is it that you're doing? Because right here it says, Then they, they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. Are you encouraging people or are you discouraging people? We are living in perilous times. We need to be encouragers of people. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. He's listening. Like, oh, wow. You know, when I was growing up, we had party lines. And you could always tell when somebody picked up the line. <laughs> it was so cool. <laughs> It didn't matter. It didn't matter how quiet you try to be. If you picked up that phone, you could hear. And they could hear you pick it up. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Jesus, I want to be constantly thinking upon your name, Lord. I want to be constantly aware of your presence around me, in me, through me, all over me, Lord. Keep focused on the good things because we are going to have, just like that day at the rally and the sun came out and it warmed all of us, we're going to have another sunshiny day just real soon. It's going to be good. It's going to be good because why? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11 and 1. God is faithful. That's a message that we, the on Sunday before we went to the rally, that was the message, God is faithful. And Brother Bernard preached it at our church, and it was so good. I mean, I wept and wept and wept and wept because God is faithful, and freedom means a lot to God. He built the United States so that we could be a light sitting up on a hill, so that we could pull, push out the gospel all over the world. He's not going to forsake us. Have we forsaken him and taken him out of many things? Yes. But God's not a human like us. We have to repent because where's judgment been? Judgment has been in the house of God, right? We've been repenting. We've been fasting. We've been praying. We've been seeking God. Yeah. So just like somebody told me uh, about COVID, God didn't, I, I believe man created COVID, but I believe God used it for his benefit to set the church down, his bride, and let her see the wickedness that she has allowed in through her eyes, through her ears, what she has touched, what she has said with her mouth. And he's corrected her and chastened her because who the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. He corrects. He puts us on the right road, right? Well, now, okay, now that his bride has repented, what's he going to do now? He's going to take care of the enemy. Because that's what he does. Now, he's going to judge the outside, the world. Wait and see the glory of God. What's going to happen here? It is so good because this whole year, God has let everybody have a time to repent, 
to see, turn from their wicked ways. It's happened. Now we just have to wait and see what God's going to do. Keep repenting. Keep winning souls. Because the, the revival that's here, it's here. I, the, the Lord let us see that with this. Uh, we drove 1500, over 1,500 miles to, to uh, Washington, D.C. We met patriots all over the place that were praying, that were seeking, that were loving God. It was so beautiful. And more than ever, I'm convinced that we live in the greatest land on this earth. And there are many other countries that are watching this beacon of light because brothers and sisters, men and women, we are that hope and we're not going out. God built America to push out the gospel, which which we've been doing, which we've been doing. But you can't just push the gospel out and not live by the gospel. You can't say one thing with your lips and do another thing in your heart. The heart is wicked and deceitful, and no man knows it. Let's pray. Lord God, we love you. And the only way to get the heart clean is repentance. Baptism in Jesus' name and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Then he'll give you the heart as stone. And then when you do those things, your heart will be flesh. And it is so beautiful. It is so beautiful. It is so beautiful. That's John 3, Acts 2, 38. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. And the second is namely this. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love yourself. Be good to yourself then you won't hate your neighbor. Another testimony. We have some family members that are coming very heavily against us. It's okay. The hatred, the bitterness, the, the raw, I don't know what. And uh, it's okay. Because there's rage for some reason. I don't understand. I don't know. But it's okay. Because I need all that to come out so that they can, they can get that seed ward out of them. Because it's not me that they're angry and raging at. It's something within themselves. To God be the glory when they figure that out. I love you. Let's pray. Lord God, I love you and I thank you and I praise your holy name. You're everything. God, I'm asking you for everyone that is fighting the fight of faith to ha, that has gone to hopelessness, God, that you raise them up and strengthen them, Lord God, because, God, we truly are in the last days. And, God, we need to hold on to you. Stronger than ever, Lord. We will not bow to the Antichrist. That spirit, Lord God, we will not bow. Lord, we are going to worship you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. There's only one God. And that's the only one I'm bowing to. Have a great day.